everyone, I am back with a new video and this one is going to be two ways to digitize your hand lettering slash calligraphy. I create calligraphy a lot for my stationary needs such as invitations for brides and such. If you're interested in creating prints or incorporating this into your own designs, then I hope you follow along. The two ways I am going to digitize are one in Photoshop and this is just a simple way to kind of um, do prints that are still high quality. A lot of people think that you have to vectorize all of your hand lettering um, no matter if it's print, digital, whatever. That is not the case. You only really have to vectorize your work if it is going to be in gold foil, uh, silver foil, any kind of metallic foil, also letterpress, or if you are going to make the design like 40 feet by 40 feet or something. Uh, that is when vector really comes in handy because as you may or may not know, if you have a raster file, you have in pixels, and when you blow that up, you're going to see all those little dots. If you have it in vector, it's going to constrain the, uh, the proportions and also it's going to keep that quality, which is exactly what you want. Now, for most of my work, because I do do a lot of gold foil work, I, of course, vectorize my stuff. But if I am doing like prints that are just flat printed, I just do it in Photoshop and it's super easy and it's super quick and you don't really have to do too much with it because obviously my print is going to be about 8 by 10 and it's not going to be like 40 by 40 feet. So that is pretty much when you would need to vectorize your work. I don't vectorize all my work, but I do vectorize it a lot depending on what I'm doing it for. So I'm going to show you the two different ways I digitize my hand lettering and I hope you follow along. So let's get started with the tutorial. So I am using my Epson Workforce 3520 series printer. It has a built-in scanner and that's what I always do my scanning with. I always select text, 600 dpi, and also save it as a TIFF file. I save it as text because that helps boost the blacks and then also the whites so that way I don't have to edit as much later on. As you can see, the color is a little bit off and also the black and white isn't as vibrant as I would like it to be. So I have already selected where I want the file to be saved and then all I'm going to do is drag and drop it into Photoshop. Now that I have it in Photoshop, I know that my color is going to be a little bit weird so I'm going to make it grayscale instead of bitmap. And then I am just going to make the background layer unlocked and then create a duplicate layer. I am also going to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise because I don't want to be working on this sideways. To quickly delete the white background, I'm going to go to the eraser tool and then click magic eraser tool. And that is going to select everything and make it transparent, which is exactly what I want. I am now going to erase with the plain eraser tool and also use a small paintbrush at 100% opacity and 100% hardness. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball the size. Using the tiny paintbrush tool, I'm just going to smooth out any lines that may be a little lumpy or crooked. And then with the eraser tool, I'm just going to kind of refine that. And I usually go back and forth. The shortcuts for the eraser tool is E, and the shortcut for the paintbrush tool is B. A little tip for creating straighter lines and just not like really keep clicking, clicking, clicking is to hold down the shift and then just click and then you will create a straight line.
Now, we have it on grayscale right now, so what we need to do is go to image and then mode and change it to RGB. To change the color, I created a new layer and then I selected a color and used the paint bucket tool to just fill in that new layer's color. Then I linked the two layers together by using option and then just pressing between the two layers. To change the color of layer 2, which is our fill color, I am just picking a color and then using the paint bucket tool again. And that will change it to any color that I want to. So I'm going to stay in Photoshop for this and all I'm going to do is change the canvas size. And right now I'm not exactly sure what canvas size I want to do, so I'm just going to choose something. And then I'm going to pick the photo that I want to use and just drag and drop it into the space. This is an image from emmaroseco.com. So now what I'm going to do is just change my canvas size to fit the stock image and all I'm doing is using the crop marks and just manually changing it myself. So now all I have to do is select the linked layers of the lettering and then I can change it to whatever size I want to do. So let's just put in the middle, make it a, a nice size and then we will be finished. To make sure everything is centered, I'm going to select all of the layers and then go to the align tools and just change it there. Make sure that you have selected the crossbar tool at the top left. It's the very first one. I'm just going to save it as a Photoshop file in case I want to use this later and I'm just going to save it with all of the layers. I am going to save it as a JPEG but first I'm going to reduce the DPI and now I can save it as a JPEG to use on my website. And that is how you save it as a raster file in Photoshop. Now I am just going to isolate the lettering and then use those crop marks again. I am going to isolate it and now save it as a TIFF because I want it to be a high quality image whenever I put it into my Illustrator document. Make sure you unselect layer and also have the compression to be none and if you're working with the Mac make it Macintosh and then just press OK. I already have an Illustrator document with a design in it and all I want to do is put the lettering inside of the design and all photography is created by Emma Rose Company. Now what we're going to do is do image trace and I am going to show you all of the different options that I have. You can copy my image trace presets and I have about five or four that you can save so make sure you screenshot these. Each one is for a different thing but sometimes I just like to experiment and then try whichever one looks best depending on the lettering because not all lettering is created equal. If I know that I'm going to vector something I usually put the original scan TIFF into the Illustrator document because I know that image trace is going to continue to mess up the lettering no matter what I do. I'm going to choose the first lettering option. I like that one the best. And then make sure you always ignore white so that way you don't have to knock out the white later on. I'm just going to expand it and now it is a vector file. Now I can change the colors. But what I really need to do first is always make sure it's in RGB. So that way I can change the colors. And I'm going to make it into the same green as the typeface that I'm using 
by using the eyedropper tool and selecting the color that I want. I always like to have my Align Objects box on the ready because I always like to make sure everything's in the center. And sometimes, especially for lettering that's a little bit loopier, you want to eyeball it and make sure that it is visually centered instead of exactly centered because your eyes play tricks on you. We are going to go in and I am going to show you one of my favorite tools and it is the Smooth tool. Make sure you select your lettering now that it is vectored and then use the smooth tool and it will make it a lot smoother and also use less anchor points. Now just go through and smooth all of your lettering. You may not have to do it to every single thing, but I like to make sure that everything's smooth and that there's no lumps. And you can also go back manually using it the wide arrow tool to make sure that everything works. This is all trial and error pretty much, so just play around with it and definitely practice with it. Now I'm going to go in with the wide arrow tool which is the shortcut A and I'm just going to play around with the handles and the anchors and the handles are the extensions of the anchor points so you see the little dots and then you see two little lines coming out from it. That's what I am working on and you can always go back and forth between A and then the smooth tool because it just helps with streamlining it and I always make sure that whenever I am uh, connecting the letters that I have a nice little point where the letters meet up with each other I like them to be nice and neat because if they aren't then they kind of look a little sloppy and it just doesn't convey the same professionalism that I really want in my work so I'm just going to continue to do this for a little bit and then make sure that everything kind of makes sense such as the downstrokes are thicker than the upstrokes and so forth. So now I am going to change the color and kind of show you what I did and the difference between what the original and what the lettering looks like now. And as you can see there is a dramatic difference and I forgot to actually include the uh, knockouts in the like the O and the S and stuff like that but you can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about such as it's very subtle in some parts but kind of like the loop and the T and then some of the S's and so forth are a little more dramatic so that is just a fun way to show you what it looks like before and after and then comparing it. I'm just going to revert it back to the green and then save it as a new illustrator file. So now that that is saved I am going to show you how to prep your files for sending it for gold foil or letterpress or whatever it may be. Right now I'm going to show you what it looks like using layers. And what I'm going to do is make the top layer just for gold foil, I would normally do this black, but I forgot to put this in. 
uh, while I was filming this. And so the top layer would be just the lettering for the letterpress with the gold foil and then the bottom would be kind of like the flat printing. So that way they have a layer for each set of printing. Depending on your printer, they may want a PDF of both or they may just want the actual Illustrator file. So that is the end of both ways to digitize your hand lettering or your calligraphy. I hope you continue to follow me on YouTube by subscribing below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And also, if you have any suggestions, don't forget to comment below or direct message me on Instagram at Sarah B. Calligraphy. You can see a lot of my calligraphy work on my Instagram page and also my website at sarahbcalligraphy.com. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I will talk to you later. Bye!